Hi, I'm Chloe, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a really cute patchwork bag. Here's what you'll need. A few yards of fabric in a bunch of different patterns. I chose fabrics with similar colors for a more cohesive look. You'll also need some trim, some fusible interfacing, scissors or a rotary cutter, an iron, and a sewing machine. First, I cut my fabric into 3 inch squares, making sure there was a variety in the patterns that I cut. Then I stitched these squares together using a quarter inch seam allowance with right sides facing each other. I used a method called chain piecing, which means I didn't cut the thread in between sewing pairs of patchwork pieces. This saves a lot of time and thread when you are sewing together a lot of pieces in succession. Here's what the pieces should look like before you separate them. Sew these pairs to other pairs. Continue to do this until you have 8 sets, each with 6 squares in a row. It's okay if you sew too many pairs together than you will need for the back. You will use them later to make the straps. Then iron the seam allowances open so that there will be less bulk around the seams. This step is optional, but recommended. After that, sew the rows together to make two patchwork blocks of four rows each. see me ironing the seam allowances open once again. I didn't show this, but I cut two strips of fabric the same length as the patchwork block with a width of 3 inches. This will make a nice border around the top edge of the bag. Sew these strips along the top of each block. Prepare your lining fabric, which should be the same size as your patchwork blocks, including the top border edge. Lay a piece of fusible interfacing between the lining fabric and the block and iron the layers using steam. Make sure not to iron over the upper strip of fabric since that is where the straps will be attached later. Repeat this with the other block and cut the pieces out. This is what it should look like after you cut the pieces out. Sew more 3 inch squares together to make the straps of the bag and press the seam allowances open. I made my straps about 20 inches long. Again, iron the seam allowances open for less bulk. This is more important for the straps because they are thinner than the bag itself. Fold the edges of the straps inward to meet each other in the middle of the strip and fold the strap again to conceal the raw edges. Then top stitch along the edge of the strap. This would be easier if it was pinned. You can also cut a strip of batting or interfacing the length of the strap to place inside. This would give the straps structure and make them a little more puffy. Take your 
time as you do this step because it will look a lot neater if you do so. Top stitch along the other edge of the straps to make them look flat and even. Pin each end of the strap 4 inches from either side of the block. Make sure the same side of the strap is facing up on both ends. Then top stitch along the top edge of the bag, securing the straps in place. Before I did this, I turned the lining and the patchwork block inward twice to hem the top, just to make it a little neater and to conceal the raw edges. Then, with the wrong sides facing together, sew along the sides of the bag with a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the bag inside out and sew along that same side with a 5 8 seam allowance, concealing the inner seam. This will make a French seam and will conceal the raw edges of the bag. Then sew a straight stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance across the bottom of the bag. After this, I stitched with a zigzag stitch along the bottom so that the edges would not fray. You could also use pinking shears and cut along the bottom. This step is to make boxed corners on the bottom of the bag, making a little more volume and an actual bottom in the bag. So you're going to pull the sides of the fabric out and sew a straight stitch perpendicular to the seam. Make sure to backstitch so that it's very secure. Here you can see a little bit of my hand and a ruler making a line just so I know where to stitch across. I did about three inches from one side to the other of the corner and repeated this step with this corner. Then cut off the excess fabric so that there will be no bulk inside the bag. Then I used a zigzag stitch along these edges to make sure that these corners did not fray. Next I'm sewing a piece of trim that's a little longer than the perimeter of the bag and I'm just top stitching it over the top edge of the bag and folding under the last edge so that the raw edge is concealed. 